All right, so we just did the disk method. Now let's take a look at a washer example. So let's take a look at um, number one here. It says y equals x squared minus one, y equals zero, x equals one, and x equals two. Those are our bounds, and we're gonna rotate that region about the line x equals zero. Okay, so first things first, we should go ahead and graph this. Okay, so x squared minus one, that means we're just going down one, and it's gonna look something like this. There's our region here. Um, but we're bounded by x equals 1. Now you notice when you put in x is 1, 1 minus 1 would be 0. So that's right here. This is at 1. And x is 2. Okay, so we're talking about this region from 1 to 2 over here, which is this region, because um, it's also bounded by y equals 0, which is just the x-axis there. Okay, so we're going to rotate that region about the line x is 0. Now x is 0 we know is just our y axis here. This is the line x is 0. So when we're rotating that about this line here, what we're doing is we're forming these really large washers. Okay, now I like to always think of this as like, always start from your center line here. And I like to draw the line out to the radius. So if I drew this out to the radius here, I'm looking at this big thing here okay, it's coming around so that's our large radius and then we also have that inner radius here which goes from here only up to here okay and this inner region comes around and looks like this so that yellow section there I'm gonna emphasize it uh, with green okay that region we're rotating around is just this outside part of this washer that we're coming around here with okay but in order to do that okay um you know what? i'm going to kind of twist this so that you can kind of see this here okay we have this large circle and then we have this inner circle here oh you know what? i should do it with the same color okay so we have this blue line going around here okay and this is the green section that we're finding the area of around here okay so I just kind of am giving you an overhead view of what's going on because this might make it a little bit easier to explain and kind of see what's happening here okay so the large radius was from the center all the way out to that full circle. Okay, now you could see the distance of the large radius that goes from here all the way out to here. So that's going from zero to two. So that large radius, no matter what, is always two. So our big R is going to be two. Now how about the little r, this blue thing here? Well, this blue line goes out to our function. It reaches our function. So that's some distance x right here. Okay, so we know that that's the distance x because at each point, when we draw different circles stacked up, um, it's gonna be a different value here. Two remains constant because no matter where you go from your red line out to that far line, it's always two. But if I were to take this and, you know, I'm just gonna erase part of this for a second, okay? And I went down here, this radius is different than that radius. But both distances are still x here when you're doing your circles. Okay, so now let's get rid of those and let's put this other circle back here. So that distance here, the small radius from here out to here, that's that distance x. But notice we're revolving around this line. Okay, which is a vertical line. When you're rotating around the vertical line, you want everything in terms of y. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of work here. Okay, now first things first, um, since everything's in terms of y, we need our lowest y value, okay, which in this region, it goes down to y is zero, and then the highest y value. Well, and when x is two, two squared minus one, we get that y is equal to three. So when I'm writing this out, our boundaries are going to be from 0 to 3. And remember, we're doing pi r squared 
minus pi little r squared. Okay. So when we do this out, you know, I'll write it there. Um, we're going pi from 0 to 3. The big R we said was 2. So that's just 2 squared minus, now the little r is x. Okay. But I don't want to just put x because we need this in terms of y. Okay, well, here's what I know. I know that y is equal to x squared minus 1. So I can solve this, just add 1 to this side, add 1, we get y plus 1 equals x squared. And then if I actually just go ahead and take the square root of both sides, we get that x is the square root of y plus 1. Okay, so we get x is the square root of y plus 1, that whole thing, squared. And then we have our dy. And now we can go ahead and solve this out and see what happens. So if I did this out here, um, we're getting pi, and then, uh, you know, I'll keep this here, 3. This is just 4 minus the square root squared just becomes y plus 1 dy. Distribute that negative sign through. We get 4 minus y minus 1, which is the same thing as 3 minus y. And now we're taking the integral of that from 0 to 3 um, here, and we could do this out. That then becomes pi times, and then we can go ahead and integrate. 3 becomes 3y, y becomes y squared over 2, and now we're going to do that from 0 to 3. So if we do that out here, uh, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 squared is 9, 9 over 2, and then if you put in 0, that would just be 0 minus 0. Okay, so um, that part's just going to disappear here. All right, so 9 minus 4.5 is just 4.5, which is 9 over 2. So this would be 9 pi over 2, and that would be our answer. And that's it. Okay, so just the really important thing here is to make sure when you're drawing in um, your radii, make sure you do it from the center out to the farthest line and then out to the closer line there, and you'll have your region. Thank you.